Hello, welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how we can read CSV data from SFTP server. So as in a screen, you can see this is our CSV file with some data and the same CSV file employee data.csv we have placed over SFTP server. So this is our SFTP server and the SFTP server on this location we have provided or we have placed our CSV data. The same data we have to read in integration and we have to return back as a response of that integration. So how we can read CSV data from SFTP server? In Oracle integration, we will learn in this video. So here you can see as this is our CSV data and the data we have for the in the file is this one. And once we open the data file in Notepad, you can see this is the file data separated by comma, right? That's why we have this is CSV file, comma separated file, the same data we have to read in Oracle integration and return back as a response of that integration. So for returning data as a response, I have already created a response sample. You can see the response payload, simple response payload with the, the header as the CSV file data with all the columns. And this is the empty tag here. It will be replaced by the data, whatever data we have in the file, right? So here as there can be multiple data, right? Multiple records. That's why I have added the angle square bracket here so that we can, it, it can be considered as a area of element, area of this element, right? So now I will use this say, response payload while configuring the integrations. Now here, as I told you that, what we can do is that even we can add the request payload in the integration also. So what request payload we can give is that in request payload, in request payload, we can provide the file, file path, right? So I will just make a simple response request payload here. File directory, right? And here at the runtime, we will provide the directory, right? So this will be our sample request payload and this will be response payload for our integration. So let's begin. So before going to start, I request you, if you have not subscribed this channel, please subscribe this channel. Also, I have provided the WhatsApp group link in the video description. If you want to join that, you can join so that we can have the discussion and all. So here you can see as we have to make a connectivity with SFTP server, that's why we require FTP connection in Oracle integration. So I have already created one FTP connection. Let me show you the connection. This is the connection XX FTP connection. And once I will open the connection, you can see the same credentials I used here. So this is our server connected and the, what is the server details? You can see this is the user and the host, the same user and host I use in the connection. You can see so that we can make a connectivity with the same server. So now our connection in energy, it's time to create integration. For creating the integration, I will click here, create. And what kind of integration style we need to select? As I told you, we have to return back some data as a response and we have to configure some request payload. That's why we will select app driven integration so that we can configure request and response payload. XX. Get ESV from server. Right. I have given the name something like that. Just click on create. As I told you, uh, we know that whenever we're creating app driven integration, we don't have any endpoint or element in the canvas page. So the first point of the integration will be that we have to configure request and the response payload. That's why we require adapter, any connection that can be helpful for configuring the configuring the request and response payload. That's why we have REST connection. So I have already created REST connection. I will use that REST connection here. I will drag and will provide the name of this endpoint. So I will use a start REST. As REST is the endpoint connection type, as start is the activity we are going to perform using the REST. Next, here we have to provide the relative URL. I will give that read CSV file. And here we have to select method as post because we are going to configure request and response payload both. So I will select here. This is for request payload. This is for response payload. Now next. Once you will move next, you need to provide the sample for request payload in the request configuration page. You can say request payload page. So here I will select JSON and will click here. I have already created the JSON structure for the request payload. I will copy this one. I provide here. And here we have OK button. I will click OK here. That's done. Now we need to go for next. For configuring the response payload, I have already created a sample of response payload. I will use this one. And again, I will select JSON because this is in JSON format. And in line, I will provide that sample. Okay, so we have already configured request and the response payload. It's done. So now this integration is 
able to get a request payload as some value and it will return back some value as a response using this mapper. Now what we have to do is that the first point is we have to get the data from SFTP server. And we know that for getting the data from server, working on the server, we require server connection. So I have already created FTP connection here. So I will use this FTP connection here and we'll use the read operation. So here I will provide a read PSV. Now next. So here we have to say as we are going to get the data from server and read, reading the data so that we can use that why we select read a file operation and that's a select a transfer mode will be binary. We don't require to change any of this thing. Here we have to provide the directory, input directory from where we have to get the file and what is the file name, right? We have to provide. So as we have already file name here, so we will copy the file name. We will copy the file name. So I will provide file name here and this is the directory. So this directory we are getting from as a request payload. So I will not map here anything. I will map in the mapper. So Joe move to next and here, what kind of data file we are going to receive? We are going to receive data file as CSV. So here we have to select as yes for adding the structure of the CSV file. We'll select CSV, move next. Now we have to provide the sample file. Sample file for this structure. As we have this file, we have to provide this sample structure so that we can read the data based on this structure only. So I have already this file. So this I will use the same file as a sample. So I will click on choose and I will select the file from here only. So now I have uh, selected my CSV data file. So whenever we select the CSV data file by default, it's selected as a field delimiter comma. Because if you will see when we have opened the CSV file in Notepad, you can see we have delimited as comma. The file is separated by comma. That's why we have here comma. If instead of comma, if we have any other file separated like pipe symbol or anything, we, we need to select that one only. So this one, the character set will be UTF-8 only. We don't need to change optionally cruise by double quotes. Here, why we are using this one? If you will see, we are providing a string data. You can see this is optionally enclosed by double quotes. So whatever data will be inside the double code, it will consider as a single data, right? So everything is done here. You can see one thing, right? Here we have all the file header name, whatever header name we have in the file, name, domain, and all, all listed here, right? So that's perfectly fine. And you can see the structure data type of this one. And the last line, you can see all columns are mandatory, right? We can skip this one, or if we want, what we can do, we can make the all column as optional by tick here, but it's mandatory to have a single column, minimum one column as mandatory. So I will make the one column as mandatory. Why we are using mandatory is that if we will not use mandatory, it, it, it cannot add the empty file, right? That's why we have to make mand mandatory. And we added optional all because of there can be some file where we don't have data for anything. We don't have data for do DOB domain and all, but we will have, we know that we will have a data for name. The name cannot be empty. That's why we added name as mandatory. Now here we have to provide the record name and the record set name. So I will use R for record, RS for record set, right? So next and done. So here we added the FTP endpoint to read the data from, get the data from SFTP server and read the data, same. Both operation will be done in using in a single operation as a reader when we select. And now here we can see we have already provided the file name. We have to provide the file directory. So this is the mapper where we can provide the file directory. So I will open the mapper. And here you can see file read request. Once you will expand, you can see file name and directory. This is the same while configuring the FTP endpoint we have seen. So we have already provided the file names. We will provide directory name only. So we have directory name from the re request wrapper as we added the request response. Uh, request payload. So we map that one. If we map the, we provide the file name here, the previous file name, which we added while configuring that will be replaced because the more value have for, have for the mapping is for the, the mapping we are providing from here. So that's done. We will validate and close. So our integration is done. It will get the data from as FTP server and open the data for read. And what we have to do is that we have to return back the data as a response of this integration. So this is the mapper for response of the integration and data where we have the read CSV response, we will have the data. So I will open this mapper. 
and map the data. So here you can see in the response wrapper website, we have the, here we have CSV file data. This is the same CSV file data request we have, right? You can see this is a CSV file data. Inside that we have the value. So here you can see inside the CSV, once we will expand, we have the value you can see. And here as we provided this square bracket, it means that this is the array element. This is the array element. That's why you can see we have the array symbol here in CSV data file. CSV file data file is in array format. That's why we have here array format. Now what we need to do is that whenever we are reading the data, we are getting data in array format only. So once you will see read CSV response, once we will expand this one, here you can see we added the RS for requested inside that we have R for record. So you can see that in the CSV file, we have multiple records, right? That's why you can see this record R is in array format. So what we need to do is that we need to map this array with this array so that whatever number of records we have in the file, the same number of record will be written in the response. And now here we have to map this name with name, DOB with DOB, address with address, contact with contact, domain with domain, and DOB with DOB. So we have already done the mapping. Now we have to validate so that this map will be configured and saved. Just close. So we have done with our integration. This will get the data file from SFTP server open and in the response of this endpoint, we will get the data and the same data we are mapping here, right? So here you can see we have one error. This error is related to the tracking variables. So as we know that for each and every integration, we should have the mandatory minimum one tracking variable, max to max three tracking variables. So whatever request payload I am getting, I am just mapping in the tracking variable. So we can see we don't have any error now. We will save and close. So our integration is in configured status. It means we can activate this integration. So now for activating, just click here, enable the tracing so that we can get to know about the log messages and all. Just done. It will take a little bit of time. Once it will activate, we can run. So now it's activated. We will run. Just click here. Paste. So now you can see integration is in run mode. So now we have to provide the request values. In body, you can see we have already added this one as a sample. So the same sample is reflecting here. We can change the file name, file directory from here also, but we don't want to change because this is the same directory from where we have the data file and the file name I have already hard coded in the, I have already hard coded in the mapping. So just click on test. So it will read the data file from this directory and in response, it will return back the data. So from where we will get the response, just scroll down, you can see the response. So in the response, you can see we have three records. That's why we have three data, you can see. Right? So this is the way we can read the CSV file data from SFTP server. In next video, I will show you how we can read the five separated data file from SFTP server. Thank you so much for watching. We will connect in next video. Don't forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you so much again.